someone tell the people outside? Yeah, just, just close the door okay. for it not to start buzzing. Yeah. Great. OK, awesome. Uh, first of all, thank you for everybody for showing up. It's really amazing. I think that more than 250 people showed up. So a round of applause for everybody. Great. OK, for those of you who actually know me, uh, you know what we're going to do right now? Win, win, seven points. Uh, we're going to do a selfie, so everybody that wants to be in the photo, just scooch. And I'll, I'll try to get everybody. Try getting in. I'm almost getting everybody. You have too many messages. And one more like this. Yes, I'm annoying. I know, I know. OK, so first of all, uh, Thank you for all of the amazing organizers, uh, Varada, Wix, Iron Source, and all the people that actually like were a part of it. And uh, we're really happy to do uh, some kind of cooperation like that with the Big Things community. Uh, you're more than invited to join the meetup group, uh, be at our meetups. And by the way, the recordings will be uploaded to, I think, multiple places. Also to Varada, the Big Things community. I think even Wix will upload it to their own uh, website. So. Uh, it will be out there. And uh, thank you very much for the founders of Presto for uh, showing up here and being a part of also the Israeli tech community. So a round of applause also. <laughs> I just found out that we flew here on the same flight from San Francisco, actually. <laughs> and uh, we'd like to engage with your questions. So I won't blabber a lot. And if you don't have any questions, I can start talking also. OK, we have the first question. So, Please wait for the mic. It's back there. So uh, yeah, so Facebook continues to develop their uh, their version on, on the old repo and the old website. But if you look at the like who, who's actually contributed to Presto over the past few years, uh, pretty much the majority of the, all the contributors have moved on to the to, to a new repo, to the new uh, the new website. We're doing all the there. So uh, if you look at the at the stats now, uh, we. And since since uh, we created the foundation, there are more than 800 commits on the on the new repo. The the old repo has much less activity. So, and I know you should you should keep an eye on it. Uh, I expect uh, the, the press to sequel to continue to accelerate as more people get involved. And uh, and and if there are if there are things that are interesting, we're gonna be watching the other repo and pulling the the, the things across. Um, and then there are um, there are a number of features that sometimes get put in ahead um, in different specific products from commercial vendors, etc. Um, for the ones that they intend to open source, we're almost always working with them throughout the project, um, and you'll see that uh, like the cost base optimizer is one of those. It just took a really long time to get it uh, right and integrated in, and the Starburst community, when they built it, they put it in their product, and because they have a uh, self-contained product, it's easier for them to make changes. So they were able to get it in a lot quicker for them. Um, but like these other things, like we're you know actively working with everyone in the community to try and get the best stuff back into the version that everyone's using. Yet another question. Who has the mic? Hear her. What are the main advantages of Presto or Spark SQL? I actually don't use Spark SQL, so I can't <laughs> honestly tell you that. Um, maybe Martin, do you have any idea? I'm not very familiar with uh, Spark SQL, so 
Is there any Spark SQL <laughs> user here that can compare both? <laughs> I think it accelerates faster. Uh, so, Hello. can you repeat what he said? Um, I have an answer for that question. <laughs> <laughs> At least in my organization, we use Spark SQL as for a high replacement, and that means we use it for, we let the data developers use it, and the analysts, they use um, an, an MPP engine, like Presto, like Impala, and this is not on the same um, queue as Spark SQL. It just, Spark SQL is for, to me, is for batch processing, and this is more for the analysts for reporting for batch And how queries? Just different, uh, much, low latency, much more low latency than Spark SQL, because it's not like managed via YARN or something, so it's like for a uh, whole other uses. Okay, okay. Well, I've got one. Yeah. Cool. In my opinion. Marty? Yeah, one, one thing uh, uh, to add, they mentioned uh, ETL versus interactive queries and reporting. At Facebook, uh, for the past couple of years, I mean, for, before we, we left, um, there, was a, there has been a project to migrate uh, many of the ETL workloads from Hive which was deprecated to, uh, to Presto. And by the time we left, like, there was almost half or a bit more than half of all the ETL workloads were running on Presto. So it can be used for that too. And I mean, and it's, I, I, again, don't use Spark, but it's significantly more efficient and cost effective than uh, doing the ETL in, uh, in Hive. Um, but I mm -hmm. don't know about Spark. Yeah. yeah, there's another question. Wait, wait a second. You can ask questions for the other speakers too. Yeah. Ah, of course. Are you going to use index? Sorry, can you repeat? Indexes. Are you going to use access to index or something like that? No, see fine. Uh, so Presto today supports, uh, indexing is a complicated topic, so Presto supports a execution mode for joins that allow, uh, allow the engine to, instead of, uh, I don't know if you, re if you just, uh, remember from the, the talk from Roman, he was talking about how Presto loads one table into memory and then uh, joins <coughs> it against, uh, process against that table. There's a, a mode where you can process just one table and then on demand, get the rows that match uh, from the other side. So if you have a connector that under the covers uses an index, you can implement a, a set of APIs and, and, and effectively use that index uh, to execute your query. Um, there are, and that, that's at the query, global query execution level, but within a, a specific connector, within a specific format, there are, you could think of uh, local indexing. This is something that uh, actually Varada d does uh, in their product. So the Sorry. Uh, oh, the well, the, the, that was specific for the, uh, to each data format. So uh, I don't think Orc right now has a way to index. But it, so I mean, uh, what Orc has internally, the min max is technically called a Brin index. It's a binary range index. Um, and then they also support uh, bloom filters, which is just another form. Um, so uh, Presto is a federated database, so we're typically not in the business of going into specific storage solutions and uh, updating them to support features like that. If they happen to support that, then uh, someone, whoever writes the connector, typically tries to take advantage of it. Uh, assuming they know that Presto also supports it. Um, I'm not aware of much progress in the Hadoop ecosystem around doing, um, adding index. There was some work on that, uh, but it really didn't get traction. So if that became popular, we would clearly add support for it. Um, and I think yeah, and the JDBC connectors, um, they support indexes, the underlying databases index. So if you say like where select from a table where ID equals X, that filter will be pushed down into the underlying database and will take advantage of the index in that database. And also the uh, thrift connector, which allows you to implement a thrift API um, 
as a service, and then the connector will talk to that, um, that also supports indexing. So if you uh, have like already like an indexed uh, key values, um, you have a key value store and you want to like put a thrift API on top of it, then Presto can talk to that and take advantage of the indexing. Okay. I, I, yeah, I want to push a question. Yeah. yeah, okay. So I'll push a remote question right now. And uh, afterwards, by the way, if you have uh, questions for the other speakers also, this is the time, okay? So uh, the scan of Presto is partition-based. Without uh, it, we, we scan a lot of data. What is the best approach with minimizing data scan for non-partitioned columns, for example, user ID and not date? So the answer is normally you bucket. Um, so you, um, so the, the issue with partitioning and with bucketing, which is just another form of partitioning, is uh, especially in Hive, is you get to do it exactly once. And so you have to kind of know like, oh, this is the native way this table is divided up, which is great when your table just has a user ID, but when it has user ID and it has like advertiser ID, then you're in trouble because you got to pick one of them. Um, I think the, um, the stuff coming from Netflix, Iceberg, has a much better solution to this where you can do multi-level hierarchical uh, bucketing where you can bucket by multiple things. Um, so that's a work in progress from them. There's a, they're working on the spec. It's basically a replacement for um, the, uh, it's a replacement for the Hive specification. It's, it still uses S3 or the storage like anything else, but they have a new way of laying data out and it's transactional, a bunch of other things. We're, we're super excited about it because I think it addresses a bunch of the shortcomings of, I mean, Hive was designed, what, 15 years ago now? 10 plus years ago, like, and there's just things that were, you know, missed that no one knew in the early days, and Iceberg is, I think, going to solve really kind of all of them so far. Um, so that's what I would do. I don't know if you guys have. There's one more thing you can do. Is if you have uh, data in Oracle or Parquet and you sort your data oh, yeah. uh, according to the, the key that you want to filter on, um, pre uh, when, when Presto runs a query, uh, the reader can, uh, by looking at the min-max stats for each of the segments, he can decide to drop some segments and, and read only the, the ones that are relevant. And you do that with sort bucketed tables. And you do that with sort bucketed tables. Yeah. And uh, Orc also has bloom filters, which Presto can take advantage of. start with the ORC question. Um, so in Presto, ORC is, I believe, by far the most performant format. Um, we wrote custom ORC writers that read and write directly into Presto um, uh, data structures. So there's like no, li there's no separation between the two, so you get like super performance. Uh, and then we tune them because this is what Facebook uses. Um, and so it was super important to have really good performance at Facebook. Um, the, the folks at Netflix and then Uber uh, worked on, sorry, what? Oh, and Twitter, yeah. Worked on uh, improving the parquet format. Uh, they picked up a bunch of the techniques we used from the orc writer to improve that. Uh, but when we did the orc writer, I started with the bytes in the raw files and built up. And they started at a higher level in the, uh, the existing Parquet APIs. So I'm not sure if they're able to get the same performance. Um, it's just, it's tuned all the way down for Presto. Um, that said, uh, scanning and decoding data, that's actually a, 
depending on your workload, might be a very small part of what's actually going on in your queries. Um, and the ergonomics of the format really matter. And so if you're a Spark user, like Parquet is, from what I understand, by far the best format in it. And so I would, I personally would pick whatever's gonna be best for your users, because in my mind, it's almost always the humans that end up being the most expensive thing in the data warehouse. And like you wanna make those really expensive data engineers like happy and successful. So like the raw performance, like yeah, it might cost you like a couple of percent more. Like does it matter? I don't know. Um, and then, I don't know if you had more. Yeah, so the other question about uh, Spark bucketing. Um, it's, it's a bit unfortunate that Spark chose uh, to not follow the Hive standard for bucketing. Um, I, I personally wasn't aware of like that Spark did it differently until maybe a couple months ago. Um, so, and because that was like the first time that I'd heard a user ask for it. Uh, so for, for that kind of stuff, um, there's kind of two ways it gets in. One is that we hear from a whole lot of people that like this is a feature that we want you to support. Um, and then like somebody will choose to work on it. Um, the other way is like if you're really interested in this, um, like send us a pull request or like talk to us on Slack and like we can help you figure out um, where to get started in implementing that. Uh, Hive 3.0 also introduced a version two of bucketing which is like a different hash function so it's incompatible. Um, and so implementing that um, will probably be very similar to what we need to implement Spark because basically like right now we only support one kind of bucketing for Hive so like there's a bunch of assumptions that there's only like one kind of hash function. Implementing two versions um, would make it basically really easy to implement a third version for Spark. So those two things could probably be implemented more or less at the same time. Uh, yeah, and a comment on the Hive 3 stuff, like we're not actually sure anyone's gonna update to Hive 3. It's, it seems to be really incompatible with, like backwards incompatible with the previous Hives and I don't think it actually works with Spark. So if there's people from the community that are really interested in going to Hive 3, like we need to know, because right now um, we are only hearing from people who are experimenting and then finding out it doesn't work with Presto or Spark or really any of their other, or some of the tools from Hortonworks even like don't work with it yet. So um, we're kind of curious where people are gonna go because it's a really big change, um, so. I'll show a question also. <laughs> I think we should have a hashtag, make data engineers happy again. <laughs> <laughs> like a, something like that. Okay. Um, I saw in one of your presentations that you spoke about spot instances and like optimization and the matter of cost there. Um, talking about like Google Cloud, preemptible VMs are pretty a different kind of beast and not exactly like uh, launching uh, the way that Spot Instance has launched. So are you doing any like cooperation with cloud service providers? Or uh, I, I would ask here, how many people are working with Google Cloud with Presto? Surprise. <laughs> how many are working with Amazon, AWS? And on-prem? Other things? Okay. So this is, again, ju just to get a grasp of it, and are you doing any cooperation in that manner? So when we're saying spot instances, we actually mean basically anything that's a preemptible VM where the preemption time is, you know, more than is, let's say, two minutes, since that'll get us to Amazon. Um, our assumption is that Google actually ended up doing the same thing, but we haven't looked yet. We're just starting to look at this project. It, it literally dies after 24 hours. It, oh. It, it's not the same, uh, the same product. Yeah. It's not the same product because it's a different kind of offering of it being able to be shut down up to, seven, uh, up to uh, 24 hours. And the spot instances are bid priced. Basically, if you just cap your bid, this is what happens. Yeah, so. If we actually knew when they were going to be shut down, it's actually a much easier problem mm -hmm. than um, being a having basically someone show up and pick a node and be like, "That's you got to evacuate the node in like two minutes." With a effectively, we're doing streaming queries in memory. I mean, so moving, stopping everything and moving, it's a pretty complex task. Um, I don't know. Yeah, and Presto today supports um, limited support for draining, so. If you knew that, like, you've got 30 minutes left, you could actually just drain the node and, and move. Um, that's a, it's a much, 
assuming none of your queries are going to be running longer than 30 minutes. So that's a much easier problem than today with spot instances. We have two minutes, which is going to affect probably everything. <coughs> Any other questions? You're getting inbound from Google. So uh, I've been uh, working with Presto for about five years. Just come a long way, and uh, now it's so seamless, so unbelievable, great work from the community, <laughs> not just you. <laughs> uh, so my next thing is, uh, I think if you look at the dashboard of Presto UI, uh, it <coughs> provides ton of information, like concurrent queries, and CPU, uh, wall clock, and this and that. Uh, I think the end user struggle which I see is uh, people don't know what to do with that. <laughs> when things are not moving and queries are sort of you know, blocked or whatever. So are you guys thinking on those lines to make uh, that part better now? Because uh, that might be one thing there, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's an area where if people want to help, like this, uh, we, we welcome uh, the help. It's there's a set of things that, and when we were at Facebook, we were the, the, the team that developed Presto was the team that was supporting the production instances, uh, and we have thousands of nodes running, and and there are some things that you learn after you use for a while, like oh, if this problem happens, then you should look at this, at that, at that, and and then you kind of build a. a kind of a, a mental model of what's going on and, and what can fail and, and, and how to uh, troubleshoot. But we haven't, I guess there's nothing written down that like we can improve documentation, we can improve the UI, we can have, uh, uh, improve the tools that allow you to see what's going on. Um, so I, don't, I wouldn't say there are concrete plans, but if, there's, if there are things that people are interested in, people, uh, things that people want to work on to improve, uh, that's all uh, welcome. I, I'll add to that and say like the, the UI we have is what we needed to figure out what was going on. Um, and then we had a really amazing engineer who went and cleaned it up and made it like actually look reasonable to everyone else. Um, but the, the issue for us is like we've been working on this for forever and um, we don't actually like I I've never experienced Presto as a first user. So it's like we don't actually know. So we actually need external people to come and show up and help build those things and ask the questions because we don't know what are even the questions to ask are like. I have a huge model of exactly how the execution engine works and I'm just matching your query to my expectation to see if it, you know, is is working reasonably well. But no one else has that. Like that's and those the tools I need to do that are different from what anyone else would need. So um, we really do need help from other people on like what exactly do you want to see or um, or maybe us working with you saying, well, then you look at this and writing that sort of stuff down. Uh, I think that's, that's fine. Uh, and one great thing, uh, yeah. does it, like the JMX kind of <coughs> So we are trying to do yeah. So I'm just saying that, uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah. uh, if you will be basically analyzing the JMX metrics mm -hmm. and trying to match them with the events like failures and stuff like that. So absolutely, uh, from the contribution. <coughs> so that's, that's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you very Any other questions? <laughs> if not, I'll continue asking. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll ask the audience again. Who is not using Presto and here to listen? Okay, so for these guys, uh, what is the best resource that you can actually go to if you want to get involved, first of all, with using Presto, then afterwards of contributing code maybe to Presto? Well, uh, for using Presto, of course, go to the website. There's uh, instructions on how to uh, download it, how to set, how to basically how to configure it, the basic configuration, how to unpack it, how to uh, start the server, how to try out a few queries, and, and so on. Um, and then, if you want to get involved beyond that, like join the Slack channel. There's always someone, someone there. It's not just us. There's a huge community of, of people involved. And if you have questions, if you have issues, if you're getting stuck on something, if you have problems like you, I know you're trying to integrate with uh, your Hive system and you're running into some problem, just ask. And there will be something there to, uh, someone there to help you out. Um, 
Yeah, and, and if there are things that, that you think are missing, as you start, go through that process, you, you find the documentation is lacking or, or something that we, we want to know that because uh, that's an opportunity for improving the documentation, for simplifying configuration, for automating things and so on. Oh, uh, yeah, so uh, you can try, if, if you want to just play with it, you can just try Athena in, in the AWS. That's uh, Presto, so you can just try queries without having to do any setup if you want to experiment with the syntax and all that. I don't know if Google has something like that where people can just show up and try things, uh, but uh, <coughs> Athena is an option. Yeah, at Facebook we run multiple clusters, and and we have a system sitting in front of the clusters that uh, that send queries to any one of the active clusters. Uh, so when we're doing a, an upgrade, we would take one cluster down. So one, one thing to, important to note: uh, Presto has a mechanism where if a, a worker and a, a and a coordinator have a different version, the coordinator will refuse to talk to the worker. So you can do incremental upgrades within a cluster, and they, this is a an explicit decision we took like when we started because we want to keep things simple. We didn't want to have to deal with backwards compatibility in the internal protocols and all that. So uh, to simplify things, we said, OK, a given cluster needs to be uh, running the same version. So we run multiple clusters. When we do an upgrade, we shut down one. We update it, uh, bring it up, then move on to the next one, and so on. Um, and the, this Any plans on releasing For the, the server that sits in front, you mean? There, there's, um, there's actually a project from Lyft. Uh, they just open source it that does exactly that. So that could be useful to you. Um, like it's, Presto Gateway. it's called Presto Gateway. I think it's on the GitHub repo from, uh, from Lyft. And I'm sure it, it, it's probably geared to certain things that Lyft needs. So, uh, but I'm sure they will take contributions if, uh, if there's something that you need. And I think uh, Uber open sourced one, or they're working on open sourcing a uh, similar front end as well. And uh, we've heard that like Netflix and other people that run in the cloud, they do a very similar thing where instead of upgrading a cluster in place, they just fire up a new cluster, send all the new traffic to that new cluster, wait for traffic to the old cluster to die down, and then shut it down. So if you're running in the cloud, it's much easier because you can just provision another cluster. You don't have to. It's much harder when you have fi fixed physical capacity. Yeah, uh, so we're also, as part of the coordinator HA project, you can see this in the list of things, um, is so coordinator high availability is really a bunch of projects. And so the first project is uh, separating coordination of individual queries from things like uh, queuing and resource management that happen across the kind of everything. And so we can push off that. So the uh, the one of the, the additional pieces that'll happen will be supporting having a single shared queue in front of multiple clusters underneath. And then so you can take one offline and upgrade it independently of the others. Um, that's, this is a long-term project. You'll see there's a bunch of items on it that we're working on. So. Any plans to work Wait, hey. All right, it's right there. <laughs> You guys mentioned uh, <coughs> Kubernetes. Are you planning on uh, what's the plans for Kubernetes as well? And, and are you also looking at serverless running some of those jobs on like other like functions or a class and stuff like that? Uh, so, we're, who's, do you guys know, uh, who knows the most about Kubernetes? Uh, what's going on? <laughs> what are you? I think I'm mostly interested in like, Yeah, so I think the initial Kubernetes plans are like a very basic Kubernetes operator that 
runs runs Presto as it is today in Kubernetes, just as an easy way to like deploy and manage the cluster. Um, there's a Kubernetes channel on Slack, um, and that, it's a pretty active channel, so definitely join that if you're interested. Uh, the, the other stuff around making Presto more, um, it will like add and remove nodes easily. That goes into like the spot instance work that we were talking about earlier. That, but, but that still has a setup time, right, with a few minutes? On Amazon. What, Kubernetes? Yeah, so the... the cluster itself? I mean, using spot instances. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So the idea of, uh, of Lambda where you run stuff like within like a few milliseconds, um, Presto's always from the beginning been like a, it, it runs in a JVM, um, it's designed to be a, a long running process that like you start up, it loads, um, the code gets hot, and then you get good performance over a relatively long period of time. Um, it's that like, that, for example, like that's why Presto doesn't really run like in Yarn or those type of environments because it's, it's always been designed to be a, a shared multi-tenant, um, more, more long term thing, long term like minutes, not like seconds or milliseconds. This like subject, uh, the matter of functions and everything. Google just released Cloud, Cloud Run and all of these kind of things that basically don't rely only on Kubernetes. Probably they like run on the back end and everything, and it fires up like supposedly much faster. So this is maybe another way to, to look around that serverless uh, method. Yeah, one one of the the things uh, we mentioned in the talk of uh, allowing connectors to uh, resolve functions dynamically and provide function implementation dynamically can uh, we, it's actually something we, we uh, an idea we toy around and we may pursue it at some point is uh, having a connector that can execute functions remotely and uh, this could take advantage of lambda or something like that where you you're running. The, the basic query in, in, in a few machines and, and you delegate all the execution for, all the, for the functions to a remote uh, system, uh, to Lambda by, by, uh, by sending the piece of data, having the function uh, process that and return it back to Preston continue. Uh, it's still very uh, speculative, so if there's interest, something, something that people want to look into, uh, that's another potential project. I mentioned uh, stuff like Lambda or Cloud Run or those things. Um, like they, they didn't exist when we started Presto, um, and so <laughs> of course we like we didn't design with any of that stuff in mind. Um, but not to say that like we can't work on that in the future. Um, and if you're interested in that, like and you have ideas on like how we could take advantage of it, like definitely have a conversation with us because um, like I've never personally thought about it, but like it sounds really interesting. So I'd, I'd love to talk about it if you've got ideas. Mm -hmm. I also have another question. Um, if you start working, at least like with bigger workloads, like if it was, I don't know, 10 years ago, you would think of HDFS and Hive, and it was the go-to today. But for example, somebody that wants to start up an analytics uh, pipeline of some kind, uh, what like combination of tools would you recommend? Because like I spoke with Martin about uh, all of the things of uh, HDFS uh, going a bit like down in the matter of the hype cycle, and a lot of people are using the cloud. So first of all, the, the first question would be like, what are the most common use cases that you see that people are implementing Presto? And the other, what you recommend, which might not correlate. Uh, so in, in terms of use cases, we see everything. Uh, so at, at Facebook, uh, we had, I mean, we started Presto as a, as a faster SQL engine over high data. And, and then we, we made it extensible and all that. Uh, but it very quickly, uh, quickly caught on and, and we ended up implementing or using Presto for a bunch of different use cases. Uh, not just over high data, but being able to query over internal data stores that in memory or custom data stores for different mm -hmm. products, uh, all the way to a system that it was pressed on the front end, a bunch of sharded MySQL uh, on the back end, and it was serving traffic from the live site. So advertisers could go to a website, they click a bunch of buttons, and get analytics over their ad campaigns and so on. Uh, the, I know there was a, a big system for doing A-B testing. The, the analytics back end of that system got replaced with Presto and Raptor under the covers. 
Uh, and then in the past couple of years, there was a big move to migrate ETL workloads from Presto to, sorry, from Hive to Presto and, and Spark. And, and that's something that we see, uh, we see across the industry. There's people moving, people going through that progression of, oh, interactive and then uh, ETL and, and, and batch shops and all that. We also see people that are, this actually kind of in, in we, we didn't foresee it when we, we first worked on Presto, but now we, we see a lot of people that use Presto to federate queries across multiple backends. They want to join Postgres with uh, Hive, with Pinot, etc. And, and uh, there's that kind of use case. It's something that we didn't use, we haven't, so at Facebook we didn't use extensively. There was some limited support, but it wasn't exploit, exploited by people. Uh, but we see that uh, more across the industry. And, and, and then we see like com some companies building entire products on top of, of uh, using Presto as one of the core pieces, like Varada is one of them. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a kind of another use case. Mm -hmm. um, so I know in terms of what we recommend, it really depends on the use case you're trying to build. If you want to get started quickly and try things out, like using a cloud environment like AWS, uh, there's EMR you can try, there's Starburst, there's QWall, they have a set up that you can just try out and, and run without having to worry about how you configure it, how you mm -hmm. set it up, how you scale it. So I think that would be the, the way to start. And then you can get more sophisticated after that. Mm -hmm. Can I continue the question? <coughs> so basically it's using object storage, like Google storage or uh, S3. And if you want to optimize, then use some kind of like database underlink. Um, I don't know, like what, what kind of uh, things do you recommend? Because like I know that people here are from Varada, Scylla, uh, maybe Cassandra, all sorts of like distributed databases. Again, it depends on, 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 on your use case where the data is stored. Like if you have all your data in S3, it makes no sense to. Yeah. Uh, to migrate that data to a, a SQL database just so you can query it. Uh, just use Presto and query directly. Mm -hmm. If your data is in some other uh, other store, like use one of the connectors and query directly. <coughs> so normally, people already have something set up, and then they're looking at Presto. So like mm -hmm. normally, like oh, we have a Hive system, and we want to do. It's almost always. We have a Hive system, we just want to do interactive queries. And then they, like, it's easy. You just point a new Presto cluster, mm -hmm. your Hive system, you're up and running in a couple minutes, your standard BI tools work. Um, I think Superset's the current favorite of people. I mean, it changes every once in a while. Um, and people are just up and running. And then they're like, great, now how do I get data from, you know, I have my ton of SQL servers, I have, you know, data over here, and they grow, and then they're like, they're the, typically they get to that point and all the users are super happy and they're like, this is awesome, great. Uh, I no longer want to write ETL jobs in some language I don't know, I don't know this Hive stuff, and then they start doing ETL jobs on the sly. Like, they're out there and they're just <laughs> like, they're like, I just got a cron job, I can make my ETL job, they run in like 10 minutes, and then all of a sudden you have a pile of ETL jobs. Right? And then you have to go and like convert everyone to like a managed ETL system. Uh, and then that's normally when the interactive team starts uh, getting into fights with the, uh, the batch team because they're always separate teams. I don't know why. <laughs> and uh, then eventually Presto wins and uh, the batch people, they come and they join the interactive team. They're like, this is so much better. They're so happy. Okay, that, that, that's sometimes, <laughs> I want that to happen. <laughs> but yeah, so um, that's normally the story. So what should I jump from nothing to? Like, I don't know, I'd probably just use like Athena if I had nothing um, and go from there. <laughs> and any other questions for the other speakers right now? Something. No. Anything, you see that? No? He has a question. Uh, he has a question for himself. Uh, or no. <laughs> Adding on to the last answer, um, I definitely check out the uh, Quicks ID that was just announced. That yeah. was awesome. Like we're super excited because it's like it looks like the tool that we've always wanted <laughs> somebody to write for Presto. Yeah. Thank you. 
just adding on that, that that's better than the tools we had at Facebook. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I think they would be ecstatic to have that at Facebook. <laughs> Okay, I have another question. Um, in a matter of development of uh, adding things to specifically to, to Presto and the whole like, have you thought of like joining Apache Foundation and moving that forward? Um, in general, like, what's the skill set that a person has to have when he wants to start developing to Presto? And the other little bit about the Apache Foundation. So when we, uh, I mean, we started. Uh, setting the process of, of looking at setting up a foundation or joining another foundation and we looked at everything we took a long look at Apache I'm, I'm an Apache member um, and we looked at cloud native we looked at uh, Linux mm -hmm. the Eclipse. we looked at Eclipse there's actually there's there's a ton of them mm -hmm. um, and the they all it all kind of came down to like could we get something that was a really good fit for Presto? And then what happens as Presto changes? So like, you know, throughout the years, like, you know, we, we always want the community to be able to be adaptive to like what's going on. And so like Apache, for example, Apache has tons of projects. They're very good at running projects. They have exactly one way of running projects. It's called the Apache way. Mm -hmm. And if that fits your community, it's awesome. It works really well. That's not exactly what you're doing. It can be difficult. Um, mm -hmm. So we decided that, hey, we have the time, we have the resources. Uh, let's build something that's like completely custom to what the Presto community actually needs. And so that's where we ended up at starting a new foundation just for Presto. And it's not going to be a big umbrella thing. It's just to manage this and the very closely related projects to uh, Presto Core. Um, and what's, what's the other question? Uh, the other question was about, <coughs> yeah. the other question was about uh, what's the basic uh, toolbox or skill set that somebody has to have when he wants to contribute something to Presto? All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, well, uh, Presto is built in Java. So if you want to contribute to Presto, of course, like having knowing Java or, or or learning Java would be a good thing. Unless you want to work on the UI. Unless you want to work on the UI and or the docs. JavaScript <laughs> and, and stuff that we usually don't deal with. <laughs> That's why you have one guy that built all that stuff, it was amazing, and, yeah. and we didn't have to look at it ever, at it ever again. Um, so, but there's uh, I mean, different levels of, of complexity, depending on what you want to do. Like, you can start very, very simple, very easy by, uh, I know, writing functions. Those are very, very well isolated. You don't mm -hmm. need to know much about the system to be able to deal with them or, or implement them. Um, so that's a good way to start. Um, then if you want to, depending on what's interesting to you, you can get into the language side of the, of the system, like the parser, the analyzer, planner, and optimizer, or into the execution, which requires uh, thinking about concurrency and distributed concurrency and and race conditions and all that, so that gets a bit more complicated. Um, that's, uh, that's funny, because I, I would have put the complicated on the other side. <laughs> like, no, that, that, that's the straightforward stuff. The, the optimizer, that's hard. <laughs> the JavaScript's always hard. And CSS is um, hard. That I like oh. is easy. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, concurrency is uh, it's hard, hard for everyone. Pick, everyone yeah. It's easy to hear it wrong. That's a problem. Yes. Um, so, yeah, so depending on what's your interest, you, you can get into different areas, like getting into connectors also, like if you want to write integrations and that's your thing, you also don't need to learn a lot about the system to be able to implement a connector, just, uh, and there's good, very good examples of how to do that. Um, and tons of people to help. And lots of people that can help with that. Um, so, and then, of course, helping with things that are not coding, like documentation, uh, mm -hmm. Anything related to running uh, Presto at, in your environments and helping other people, that's another very good way to get involved in the project. It's not just about writing code. Helping people on the troubleshooting channel. Yeah, uh, helping people on the, uh, there's a troubleshooting mm -hmm. channel. Uh, we, we have a couple of people that, uh, it's very interesting, like, once we, we, we set up uh, uh, like the, the foundation in January, we opened the, the Slack channel, 
So a bunch of people started jumping in and helping other people like with their uh, security setups and, mm -hmm. and configuration and all that, which is something we're not very familiar with. And having other people help with that, uh, with those uh, areas is very, very useful. So that's a good complement to what's needed in the, in the project. Great. Okay, after asking a lot of questions for the panelists, I'll ask you, do you have any questions for the people that turn, turned up here? And uh, because they're probably a living community, and maybe if you have any requests also, not only questions. You got ones off the top of your head, David? Uh, <laughs> well, one request is that, tell us how you're using Presto. Like, like, we, like, uh, like Wix here, they, they said they were using Presto in production for like two plus years, and like, we didn't know anything <laughs> about it. And we're like, that's amazing, but like, Tell us you're using it and tell us like what's going well, what's not working well, like what we can do to improve. Um, like we want to hear from you. And, and uh, it, it actually really helps us when we can hear what people have used and built. So like Wix has a connector for um, connecting like Google Sheets. We saw that at Lyft and it's a great idea. We had never thought of it. If someone had brought this up like three years ago, we would have, like, I assume that takes like a, less than a day to build the whole thing. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a single spreadsheet's worth of data. I, I, can't, I assume it can't be that hard. Maybe, maybe it's super hard, but, um, but like, we would have like, worked with someone to pull it in or built it, gotten someone to build it in the community, and it seems super useful. And like, everyone could have had that for years. Um, so that's. Yeah, one other thing. Uh, so we, we, like over the past few months, we started talking to a bunch of companies, uh, try to understand how they are using Presto, what challenges they have, uh, what features they need, what like what would make their life better, and and some of the things you saw on the slides were a result of that. Like for example, all this this work on complex operation pushdown is based on talking to a bunch of people, and everyone mentions, oh, I, I need to be able to push down operations into my connector. So we say, okay, like, this is something we theoretically talked about doing in the past. Now it's, it needs to become a reality. So understanding what people, uh, people need, it's, it's a good way. It, even if it's not, it may not be just us getting, getting involved in the development, but uh, like, it can raise the interest of other people in the community to jump in and contribute and, and work on something that's needed by the majority of people, so. Mm -hmm. David, David. Oh. Like, I really enjoyed the uh, talk about acid transactions in Hi uh, for Hive, and uh, I had a bunch of thoughts on that, and um, if you run into a problem like that, like, definitely talk to us, because, like, we probably have ideas about, well, we could probably make this one, like, minor change in Presto that would make this thing possible and make it much easier for you to implement. Yeah. So anytime you run into anything or, like, you have a question about how could I do X or What's a good way to solve this problem? Like, jump on the Slack and talk to us. Like, we'd love to hear from you and help you out. And D David, in particular, is super motivated to do that exact thing. Like, <laughs> oh, I can make this one small change, and like, boom, we just solve all these problems. Um, that's why I was saying he's the Swiss Army knife. He's likely the guy who fixed the bug you had. <laughs> so, and he okay. had. Okay. So you see now we're using a press on. One use case that we use for quite a lot of time is uh, on analytics. We are experimenting with the data and analytics, uh, data engineering and such, before we actually running BPM and uh, running the data into the appropriate database. But uh, we now started to actually use a Presto in the in Athena and in real time. Uh, real time uh, API that gives actually weights on the other side to get the data. So and we are using Athena, it's not a pure Presto. I guess it's a fault. And we managed to get a half a second response time in a, with the Presto, which is quite uh, significant. Uh, our main issue with Presto is uh, we managed to do that by using a bucketing, which is extremely helpful. It's just a, a, a latency by a But when you use a filtering by multiple keys, if you, let's say you're a, uh, you have a high table that is bucketed by a user ID, and you, your query is where the user ID in. Uh, this uh, Presto, I think, is using, even though, even if all the keys are in the same file, uh, Presto will open uh, the same file in multiple 
multiple files. So if you have all the kids in one file and you have uh, uh, 1,000 kids, it will open, it will get them as many times as it is in the in the so That's our pain point. I will do so, Yeah, so the the, 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 the summary of the problem is that uh, when you're in Athena, which is a fork of Presto that I think is actually, um, hasn't been updated in a while. <laughs> yeah. Um, that what it's doing is uh, when he's accessing a bucket looking for data, it's uh, opening the file. Uh, uh, it's a, so. It's opening the file, and it might be opening it multiple times to go and look for these keys in these files. Um, so this goes back to Presto's a federated database. In a normal database, you would just keep an index around and know, um, do exactly what Verata is doing. You would, you would know exactly what's in every segment. It's actually very similar to what we do in, um, in Raptor, where you just know what's in every segment, and so you can just go uh, even at planning time, at super high speed, you can go in and be like, okay, here are the three segments that I need to touch of this entire table. In Hive, it's a little bit more difficult because in Hive, you can have unbelievably huge tables that have millions of files and so, or millions <coughs> of partitions. So we have these restrictions in Presto that we can't really go and pull all of the data for every partition ahead of time because that could actually, it, it will likely make the query take a lot longer because you're basically uh, linearizing. You have to do all this data loading ahead of time during planning before you start the query. This is actually one of the reasons why uh, Hive and uh, uh, Spark SQL have such high latency to their queries, like the minimum startup times, is because they're loading all this data during planning and then they're building really good plans. And where in Presto what we do is we try and load as just enough to come up with a good plan, and then we do all that loading in parallel as the query's going. So um, in the case of ORC, uh, the system at the very least is gonna have to open every file and say, does any data from this query actually match that file? Because we don't know um, in the bucket you're in. Uh, did you, you, you keep <laughs> giving me the sign, what am I missing? No, I was gonna, <laughs> I can hear you. Yeah. So the Hive connector has an optimization for bucketing where if you say where ID equals five and ID is a bucket column, it'll just read that one bucket. If you say where ID equals five or six, that optimization doesn't apply? Actually, That's a, it, it, it doesn't apply, just instead of just scanning the, the, the file one time, it will scan it two times. That's, that's the issue. No. The whole stuff can mm. find by like, just scanning this file, but it can scan it multiple times, it depends on the number of keys in your way. Depends on what the tuple domain looks like. Yeah, so that, that, that might also be different in Athena, I'm not sure. Um, but basically, th this often, uh, there's a special optimization for bucketing. It only happens for if you have a single bucket key. Making it work for multiple buckets is actually probably not, not difficult. Um, we, sure. ju we just never had a, a reason to implement that because no one needed it. Oh, okay. We might be talking about two different so, things. Yeah, yeah, we can take it <laughs> offline. Yeah. Um, but there's, there, there's some complications that happen when you're dealing with Hive data. Like, you know, we end up having to go and like look in really every file. Um, the, and then there's limitations on the amount of data that we get from the planning phase down. So you could be like, oh, I, I'm looking for, you know, 10 keys. That's a small amount of data. If you're looking for 10,000 keys, the system's going, well, that's a ridiculous amount of data. I'm gonna summarize that into a range. But once you have a range and you don't actually have individual keys, you can't actually pick individual buckets. Um, then again, if you had 10,000 keys, it's likely they're gonna be in every bucket anyway. So uh -huh. um, it, it's a federated system. So like we're kind of constrained to uh, how good the underlying storage system is. Um, so. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was gonna say we should look into that because there might be a bug. Yeah. It simply might be a bug in the Hive connector where it uh, it raise the same split multiple times or something like that, so mm -hmm. you should check it out. Yeah. Oh. And if you need it to work for a small number of buckets, <laughs> um, file an issue and we can look into it. Okay, so we're kind of out of time. So I would really like to thank you guys for showing up and like meeting the community and providing so much value and, and information. 
and uh, I will let Ori also like uh, sum things up. Thank you very much for showing up. Thank you much for being part of the community. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Dimi, for the meetup, for uh, the panel. Standing. The, the video. <laughs> like standing up. So uh, again, thank you all for, for coming. Uh, we're going to use this time until uh, the pizzas will arrive, because we're a bit late. So we'll, uh, we'll wait and we'll uh, take advantage of this time for the drill down questions for uh, the press of founders and for all the speakers. Thank you again very much for coming. And uh, it was amazing to see this wonderful press of community in Israel. Thank you all very much.